On 5 June this year, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Egypt cut diplomatic ties with Qatar. Among other things, they justified the act based on the state's alleged support of terrorist groups and its so-called diplomatic sympathies with Iran, all of which Doha denies. Soon after, it emerged that the lifting of sanctions might come at the cost of no fewer than 13 demands, later reduced to six principles. Among the obligations, was the closure of Al News outlets which are directly and indirectly Qatari-funded, it specified Al Jazeera, Arabi 21, RASSD, Al Arabi Al Jaith, McCamleen and Middle East I. Qatar's Foreign Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani responded that Al Jazeera Media Network was to remain an internal affair. In response, Giles Trendle, the managing director of Al Jazeera English, said it's as absurd as it would be for Germany to demand Britain to close the BBC. Qatar Gate Why is the Doha-based broadcaster being targeted? Al Jazeera is funded by Qatar, yet claims an independent editorial line. When Al Jazeera was established it disrupted the mainstream Arab language media. On the one hand, it was celebrated as mouthpiece for voices that had long been neglected, on the other, shunned as a tool for inciting sectarianism and dissent in the Arab region. While the sanctions are unprecedented, spats between Qatar and its neighbors have been common over the years and similarly Al Jazeera has frequently come under pressure. To place the channel in its highly combustible context, Trendle states the Middle East is boiling, people are very passionate, for many years they have not had a voice, Al Jazeera is like a safety valve, there is a lot of pressure that has been building up. Pressure and passions aside, many argue that for a media channel to be funded by an authoritarian regime remains problematic on credibility front. The roots of this recent Al Jazeera onslaught go back to 2011, the Arab Spring and Al Jazeera's unapologetic coverage of opposition groups in Egypt, Syria, Bahrain and elsewhere. It comes as no surprise therefore that the calls to shut the channel down are coming from those same autocratic leaderships. Bahrain's authorities for example would not have forgotten Al Jazeera's commissioning and broadcasting of the documentary Shouting in the Dark offering a rare and harrowing insight into the oppression of the country's uprising in 2011. What a confer, ex-director general of Al Jazeera, says we are being punished now because for one day we thought that the Arab Spring was a brilliant day in our history and we at Al Jazeera stood for the people who marched in the Arab streets. In the case of Middle East I, a UK-based platform for online news, David Hurst, its editor-in-chief, responded that the news site is not funded by Qatar. Instead he blames the attack on the independent nature of its media model which sells articles to an Arabic audience. Hearst says a lot of what I write and also what the rest of the Middle East I writes gets translated into Arabic and the people behind this, particularly the Saudis, are really dead scared of any criticism or examination on what's going on. Another report that would support this is that only Al Jazeera Arabic is currently being asked to close, not its English counterpart. Although the editorial line between the two differs, Hearst warns understand the mindset of a power that says we can take criticism in English but not in Arabic. Broadcasting opposition movements have often been overshadowed by the